Well, okay, I just received, I actually did receive that little notice from YouTube telling me that I am on live now. Well, I've been on live for about a minute so far. And I want to welcome everybody. It's been a very, very, very rainy time in the East Coast. As you all know, anyone who lives in this part of the country will attest to the fact that we have been flooded with rain. But anyway, I'm glad to be here with everyone. And I want to share with you really quick, just a couple of days ago, this is what happens, I guess, when you do become a little bit popular. The company that runs or creates the editor called Luminar 2018 contacted me, offered me a free version. I think one of my viewers very graciously gave me actually one of those as a Christmas present this past year. So anyway, I already had it installed, but they provided me with a free version and serial number to activate it with. And basically it's a very unusual type of film, uh, edit, uh, image editor. And again, like many tools, it doesn't really follow the rules of uh, menu type um, placement like the Adobe products use is something that you have to learn. Now, if there's any interest out there about exploring this different software and editing software, let me know because they have, they have offered me to become an affiliate with the company. That means that every time you guys place an order for this tool, I get a cut. And so let me know either via email. I will do a video on this later because I know that we don't get hundreds and hundreds of people here for the live stream so it's just simply going to reach just just a few of you i'll go ahead and post this on uh, facebook got a little bit wider audience there and of course also on the video channel but if you guys are interested look it up go to the website check it out and see if it's something that you might enjoy trying they got a trial even i will get a tiny little cut every time somebody downs downloads a trial i will also have discount 20 percent discount keys to pass out to everyone who is interested again. And I will have all of this set up maybe later on this week if there is enough demand. So right now we have, how many do we have on board here? We got 17 on board. We have four saying hello. And I wanna stress to you guys, tonight QImage is gonna give away one copy of QImage Ultimate for free. You have to be here with us presently. It's not going to be after the fact. You guys got to come on board right now. He is at his daughter's graduation. So he may come on board a little bit later on tonight. So make sure you are here to listen to everything we have to discuss. It's going to be really good. And at that point, when he does chime in, I will see him come on here. He will provide us with an email address. And you simply email that address use that address and just give them your name and i want to win i would like to win q image ultimate and at the end we will pull a winner using a random picker type program as you can see i am drinking out of my brand mug here by the way just like this one i don't want to do it to this one because i might spill it all over myself look at how durable this is and i got sharp little nails too this has been washed, I don't know how many times. And I just realized, going to some gift shop the other day, I'm really getting to be a little bit crazy, a little bit weird. Every time I see something, I go ahead and I rub it to see if I can feel where it was printed. And if I can feel it, then it was literally printed on the surface. This is, of course, sublimated. That means the vapors of the ink, when it becomes a vapor, it actually enters the sub coating. I guess it's a polyester coating on this and it enters it and it becomes bonded to it. It becomes part of it. And again, it's just not going to rub off. You can rub it all you want and there is absolutely no damage whatsoever. So it's very durable type of um, method to print either text, graphics or images onto objects such as this mug. This comes already pre-coated by the factory. We're gonna say hello to Cliff Medina. He was on here before we were even on air. 
Anthony Petit, good evening. Madot for life. Hello, Jose. Uh, where are you uh, sitting at right now, Madot? I would like to know. And Flavio Lucas. Hi, Jose. Again, please let us know where you are at. I really enjoy figuring out how many people throughout the world we can get on board. Bokeh, Bokeh, just wanted to say thank you for your videos. Recently tried to decide what printer to get for my art prints and got an Epson Sugar Color after binge watching your videos. Great, thank you so much for the binge watching. That always helps. Make sure you watch the ads. That helps even more. And that's how we survive. So let us know what printer did you get. That would be awesome. And let us know what type of work you are doing with that printer. Bob Bruce, hello, Jose from Phoenix. Mike Vernon is here. Mike, I just talked, just got off the phone with him 10 minutes ago with Michael Lee from Precision Colors. And boy, oh boy, were we discussing one juicy, juicy subject. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. And Michael Cheney is here. See that? He is here. How was the graduation? Or was that what you told me you were going to be involved with today? I hope it went flawlessly. Glad you're here. And I told everyone about your offer for a Q-Image Ultimate chance of winning. And all you need to do now, I guess, is provide us with the email address that you wish all of the applicants to send their attempt to win to. And we have Jens Ormslev. Ormslev. Hi, Jose. Again, please tell me, everyone, where are you from and where are you um, watching this from, in other words. So, Madot for Life is North Carolina. Prestigious P. Love your channel. I am watching from London, UK. Got, oh, got a Pro 1000 from your videos. Great. I tell you, Canon needs to pay me a little bit of uh, side money for all of the Pro 1000s I basically have sold for them. Man. Okay, so this B B O K K E I Bokeh, I guess, she's watching from Sweden. Wonderful. Wow, isn't that a little bit late for you? I really appreciate you being on board with us. And you, let's see, you were saying, yeah. So tell us about your art prints. Tell us about your printer that you purchased. Uh, we always want to know what people are doing. And have you joined our Facebook group? Please do so. The link is always located on my main channel. When you go to my main channel on the art, the picture of my print room and all the description about what the channel it's about on the lower right there are some icons one of them one of them is for facebook so join us if you haven't already done so and i want you guys to know real quick before i continue i want to show you how many members we got now 955 members and here are three more to join let's not even look let's approve them all and now we have 958 that's amazing awesome all right john pensadulo hi jose Oh, it just says that no ad blocker. Thank you. Yes. In fact, if you do use an ad blocker, you can always whitelist my channel, okay, so that we do earn a few pennies. Not even. It's like, um, what is it? $3 per thousand videos viewed or thousand views. No way to become rich, but it's a good way to pass on information to people who want to listen. Bass Barbie, I know he's from the Isle of Way. Uh, late here. No, you're not late here. Okay, you're late there. Yes, not to, not sure how long I will stay tonight. Well, again, before you go off, make sure that you uh, apply to win Q Image Ultimate. If you do have Windows computers, then you'll be able to use that for all of your photography and your printing specifically and many other functions. Jens Ormsley, or Ormsley from Iceland. Holy cow. Flavio Lucas, I am from Brazil. I recently bought a Canon Pro 10 to produce my own prints. And Matt Day, in one of his videos, come. Yes, I know Matt did mention me in one of his videos. Matt is a great guy. 
look up Matt Day, guys, and, and subscribe to his channel. He's really good, really good. All right, David Keefe, South Dakota, recently purchased a Pro 2000. Hope it's working out for you. Um, someone here on my Facebook group is having some problems with his, and um, Canon is really giving him a hard time about it. It's really sad. There's a long, long article here that you can read about that. RV Traveler, hola, from South Dakota. All right, so everyone is here that's going to be here for now. And we're waiting for Mike Cheney to go ahead and post his um, email that we're going to be using. Want to check to see how many people. We got 25 folks here with us. Let me talk to you about the Facebook channel and see what's going on here. We'll discuss some of these things. We got 900 people plus people here, but obviously they're not here. They're not watching. And uh, I got a lot of comments also on my uh, channel that we're going to go over and answer that before I get to the subject of tonight's talk. And again, I talked about this a little bit last week, but now I have more information. And after talking to Mike Lee from Precision Colors, boy, this is kind of groundbreaking and also revolutionary uh, things that has occurred concerning some of the Epson printers. Someone here is talking about lighting equipment to use about you know, to, to visualize or uh, examine your printed work, especially in an office that has been lit with LED type lightings, uh, type bulbs, because apparently they want to save on power, but you really need to have the correct lighting. And of course, as recommended by many people, they all claim, let me see if I find the name here of the type of bulbs that you need to really consider getting. Oh boy, now I cannot find it. Anyway, you need bright lights and you need lights that are in the correct color temperature. But I need to find the actual brand. This company specifically works with lights that are used to view prints with or art. Anyway, I cannot find it. My eyesight is so bad now. I can I can tell color, but I am having a bad time reading uh, reading up close. And uh, again, I like I said in the past video, I need to go out and get some new glasses. All right, I just cannot find it. Anyway, we'll find it at some other time. It's Solux. That's it. S O L U X. So Solux bulbs are apparently the standard for viewing your images and they provide really accurate color temperature and very good brightness depending on which ones you get they come in all sorts of different configurations and you can get them off of amazon quite easily all right this is my notice about being live we'll go ahead and remove that because it's kind of uh moot at this point okay somebody's having a problem with Pro 1, meaning the Canon Pro 1, and QImage. They said, I attempted to print an image, but print came out with the wrong colors. I double-checked my settings, but what's, what is supposed to come out black and gray comes out blue and purple. I checked all my inks. I did two nozzle checks. All came out fine. Any ideas? Should I call Mike at PC Inks? And then he puts his number. Mike's number here. You should not do that. Please don't do that. Let me go ahead and refresh this if there's anything new concerning this post. Guess what? Somebody commented. Had the same problem. Canon Techie actually re... Let's see. Oh, I got the wrong one. Sorry, wrong one. Let me go back. Here we go. And then uh, problem solved. User error. Of course it was user error. <laughs> Come on. Would you like to tell us so we will not make the same mistake? Yeah, that would be great. Like an idiot, I was double profiling. Bingo. See what I mean? I should have known better. It's all well now. And guess what, folks? I printed some shots for my wife's old school that she retired from. 
we still support the drama club. And I took some uh, headshots and I took some uh, uh, so-called cast pictures of the kids involved in this this year's play. And I double profile. So there you go. I had the Pro 10 set for no double, I mean for no um, color management. Then I set it for it to control color. And then I forgot to reset it back to no color management. So then I load it up and I see profile. And of course, my print was dark and the color was off. It tends to go toward magenta. So be aware of that. Make sure you're either letting the driver control color or the application control color. Or use a Macintosh system. Apparently, it's automatically controlled for you. So you cannot double profile. At least that's what my expert Mac users tell me. Here's a very sad thing that we reported on last week. Pro 1000, acting crazy. Apparently, it is doing a system clean on its own. A systems clean is designed to push out all the internal ink that is stored in the Pro 1000. Why the heck would you want to do that unless... You either have a bad clock, and if you have a bad clock, you probably need a new print hit anyway. So why would you do that? But anyway, this printer apparently was doing that on its own, and it did it several times to him. He contacted uh, Canon, and eventually they decided to send him a new one, and he is at this moment testing that. And he reported that on his initiation of the printer, so much ink was used, and he, he named off the, the volume according to the accounting software. And that turns out to be less than my printer used during the same operation. So I have no clue what could be causing my printer to behave and what could be causing other Pro 1000s to misbehave. So that is a mystery we're gonna to have to explore more in the future. Let's see what else we got here before we jump over to the comments in the channel. Somebody wants to print calendars. Again, calendar printing requires um, whatever size you're going to make your calendar with, and then you're going to figure out some way to bind it so that it is flippable, in other words. And there's lots of templates that you can download online to be able to create your own calendars. Most people want to have images, of course. But apparently Image Garden, which is part of the free software you get with your Canon printers, has a lot of calendar uh, templates that you can use. So that should be a good source for you if you want to get into calendar printing. This guy here was having some problems with color rendition. And I think basically the photograph is terrible because it is on its own applying a, a bias or a cast to the image. He's claiming that this is actually red. But in reality, remember, blue kind of looks purple. This is not what we call blue. In real life, we call the sky blue. And the sky is cyan. Blue is actually a purple color, optically. So somebody corrected him now. Here is the person. Let me see. That's not it. These are his settings. And he cannot find a profile or something. He was having a hard time. And somebody finally uh, helped him out. I guess he was also using a Mac. And somehow the uh, profiles were not installed correctly. So he was using, I believe, the wrong profile. He ended up using srgb as a printer profile which of course it is not it is a color space and please folks don't be tempted to use printer uh, or color spaces like adobe rgb 1998 like srgb like a what is it? a uh, pro something or, or pro pro color what is this uh, yeah pro color rgb or something like that uh don't use those those are those are color spaces you need paper profiles for the specific paper and the printer that you are using. When you do that, tell it not to control color because now your application is doing that. On a Mac, again, it's automatic. On a Windows, you got to make sure you uh, disable that. Otherwise, you'll end up double profiling the, like the previous person did. And they're looking for a matte paper that will work well with your Canon Pro 100. There are some that actually do work well. And some do not. Now, going back to the calendars, I just rambled, rambled off too much. 
uh, I left out very important information. If you want to do any kind of other type of booklet that you want to print on the back and you use double coated paper, make sure, make sure that you let all of your pages dry fully before you feed them in the opposite orientation and start printing on the other side or you may have some smudging problems and it has occurred people just don't let the first side that you print dry long enough i will leave them overnight open on a table and then proceed to print on the opposite side and make sure that your platen is super super clean okay otherwise you might drag on some smudges over the newly the, the recently printed surface because your platen is full of overspray or something like that. So make sure you keep your printer spanky clean if you're going to be doing a lot of this double-sided type printing. Somebody's asking, how many of you use third-party ink for Canon printers such as the Pro 100, the Pro 10? I would figure lots of people would answer this, but apparently only two have. Ah, here's this is a, a very sad story right here. Uh, Pro 2000 problems continues. Remember, I talked in a video recently, basically talking about why is that saying show? I want to show that. Basically, talking about um, some banding that had been reported, very, very, very tight, almost imperceptible banding on the Pro 2000. And some people either don't see it, and some people that are very, very um, acute to detecting such problems can see it. Well, this guy, you need, you guys need to go back to this Richard Clark, okay, and read this. This is really, really sad, and I am really embarrassed at the Canon technician that came to this guy's house to supposedly help him. Um, he is no no better off than he was before they came. And it's really sad that they have not been able to solve that problem. Here's a typical problem that happens in spooling when you're using Wi-Fi and you don't have sufficient uh, bandwidth, partly printed print. The way to solve this immediately is to install your printer via USB or network cable. You will not have any problems like that. Some people do not experience that. Okay, some people do. I have really good Wi-Fi here. I got really good internet speed, and I'm able to print uh, Wi-Fi. But the printing process slows down too much, and I don't use it anymore. So I have not had any problem with partially printed images, but still, it is deadly slow sometimes. Alrighty, what do we have here? Oh, okay. Uh, my P600 video that I uploaded a week and a half or so ago, um, basically I reported, and I'll just say it again because I believe it's true. Some people were having problems buying so-called initial cart sets that are being sold at a much lower cost on eBay. And the printers were simply not... Uh, accepting them and there was even a um, shot of the uh, I believe it's this guy here I'll show you guys here's a shot of the either the screen on the computer telling you that telling him that it is not accepting those cartridges basically and at least it was just one vivid like magenta I don't know whether the rest of them were not being accepted and of course, a seller of this product contacted me and started a big argument back and forth that none of his customers have ever complained. I said, well, they possibly never have complained. I'm just telling you that this guy did have a problem. Eventually, I just said, forget it. It's not really that important. And I deleted the, the video. And it not only had that information, but other information as well. That's more applicable for those of you who have a P600 and refill. And there were some practices that I recommend you do. And maybe I will redo that video next week and upload it. And it'll be it'll devoid of this problem here. But the guy contacted me, contacted me back and provided me with a screenshot 
of what he actually saw. And then so some more details here, actually a, a screenshot of the comment by the seller of these cartridges complaining that maybe he's not being honest. The, the guy reporting the problem is not being honest, that none of the other person who have bought these uh, cartridges have had any problems to speak of. Yeah, it depends. It depends on your printer, your, your word that is zoned, what the firmware is on it. It depends on many other factors. And the fact that you have not had a single customer complain does not mean that this particular customer didn't have a problem. So, you know, sorry, I have to disagree with you. All right, so that is about it. Let me see what else we got here. We'll go out of here and we'll go over to uh, YouTube. We got any comments here? Oh, we have some more applications for approval. There you go. All right. Okay, let's see. This had to do with this one here. Oh, boy, what is this? So now you have the proper ICC problem. This is the guy that was this guy right here. Remember this one, okay? So at the very bottom, finally. So he thanks everyone. So now you have the proper ICC profile. How does the output look? Much better, thanks. See what I mean? It's always about that, folks. It's always about that. Let me just give you a little hint. 90 five percent of the time i wanted to say 99 but i'm not gonna i'm gonna be more conservative 95 percent of the time it is user error okay how do i know that because i've done every type of user error under the moon and the universe so printers usually do not just change overnight okay you might develop a clog overnight and that will change your color balance but most of the time it is related simply to user error. Go back, I know no one, none of us want to admit that we commit errors, especially when it comes to tech stuff. Go back and check. That's why I love to use QImage, okay? I love to use it because it allows me to save any printer settings that I used to print any job. And I can save that, and when I call up the Pro 10, I know already I'm using Signature Edition Inks plus OEM Red. I know already I'm using Pro Luster Paper. I know already that the color management is turned off or color matching is turned off. I know already every single setting that I preset that printer with will be remembered. And I can set multiple presets for that particular printer for other papers. I can just recall them. And there you go. It's as simple as that. So let's see, Mike Cheney, where are you? Oh, here we go. Let me back up here. I'm chewing on some coconut. Mike Cheney says that the uh, graduation was great. We must go home a few minutes ago. We just got home a few minutes ago. The young lady from... Uh, Iceland, I believe it was. I got the an Epson S oh SCP sure color piece eight hundred. I'm printing art prints of the drawings I do on Hanamiel Torcon paper. My YouTube channel is a drawing channel. Hmm, very nice. Um, what are you under in YouTube? Please share that with us. People like to support each other here. My Cheney says. If you use PC Windows and you would like to win QMH Ultimate tonight, send an email to, and here it is, folks, QImage Raffle. The word QImage Raffle. And give them your name, okay, and just kind of a little blurb, blurb that says, I would like to win QImage Ultimate. Okay, so 
Mike C. Uh, Mike Vernon says, Mike C., are you giving away a copy tonight? Yes, he sure is. I was interrupted by the twins coming home. I missed that, Jose said. What Jose said. Yeah, uh, Mike, go ahead and send your request to qimageraffle, one word, at gmail.com. Okay, give him your username or your complete name. He'll be able to get back to you if you do win via that particular email. He'll just basically be replying to you and you'll know you win. You won that copy. Victor Logan Jr., there are handheld lights for auto body repair and to use as well. Okay. Um, we tend to want to use a more uh, stationary type system at a certain distance. So all we have to do is place the light, place the print that is on the surface that is being lit by those lights. That's how we normally examine our prints. Luca Ciotolo, Ciotolo. Good evening from Italy. Well, welcome from Italy. Buongiorno, everybody from Italy. Well, I don't, I don't know if my friend Paolo is going to be here tonight. He's busy repairing printers. Thomas Kiblin, evening, everyone. Mike Cheney says, Mike Vernon, our messages passed in the, in the either in the eth, eth, ether, yeah, Ethernet. Yes, email for the giveaway is qimageraffle@gmail.com. Blah 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 blah. Remember, this is for QImage Ultimate, such as such as Windows. Mentions your chat username and email. Yeah, you guys can read this. Go ahead and read that. And uh, Janet Diaz is back with us tonight. Hi, Jose. Hi, everyone. I finally got power at the home. Oh, no. Yeah, I know where you live, up in Pennsylvania. How did you guys do up there? Please tell us how you did. I feel bad about that. I was in Gettysburg just the other day, and I left. We went on Mother's Day, and I left this area here. It was about 71. Got up to Gettysburg, it was cold and uh, like 56 degrees, cloudy and wet. And I only had a t-shirt on. Not a good, not a good idea. Switch 2020. Hi, Jose. John from Fords, New Jersey. All right. We got our friend Peter from Copenhagen. And ECB, hey, I subscribed not too long ago. Nice channel. Do you know about you know what a 900 mark ii max thickness for cardboard it doesn't do very well with cardboard no um your max that i have ever printed on and i do still have one of those uh it's about 280 gram or gms that's about it um not a good printer for printing on cardboard besides it uses dye inks and it's not really good for anything that is uncoated for, um, you know, inkjet printing. It's a good photo printer, though, but not to be printing on, on, on cardstock or uh, Bristol board or that sort of thing. Philip Ferrano, QMH will be, would be a valuable asset to my Pro 10. Yeah, go ahead and email Mike Cheney. Use that email that we provided you. It's right let me go ahead and post that here. Let me copy it. You guys should be able to see it. Come on. Oh, come on. Now you're giving me a hard time. Look at that. It's not letting me go beyond that. Anyway, I will add it manually. didn't let me copy the M. All right, so now it's added at the bottom. We'll get to it. Go ahead and uh, send that to him. Make sure that everyone here does that so that you will all get an equal chance. And uh, Smart Stickers wants to know how Jose, how is going with sublimation print? It's going wonderfully. Let me show you. And Mike, I know you're watching. Look at this. This is your work. Guys and gals, 3D printer hangers. 
cyanoacrylate attached to the back of Chromalux 5x7 satin surface sublimatable aluminum. This, this lighting system here will not do it justice. This is gorgeous. This is as gorgeous and as close to the monitor as I've ever been able to achieve using sublimation process. I'm in love with this stuff. The, 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 the hard part is going back to paper after you do this. It's really, really hard once you have achieved this. So it's going really well. I'm experimenting now, believe it or not. I'm doing some coating of my own. I showed in the last video, the chit chat I think I did last night, I'm showing um, that I had to upload because of a glitch. I only ended up uploading like 10 minutes of it. And it's not 10 minutes, it's a, a lot longer than that. But I did show you some ceramic tiles that I sublimated and I came out really nice. I just basically bought these locally and sprayed them using my new airbrush. And that's working out really well. I also did a piece of glass, five by seven sheet of glass, sublimated it with a picture of my grandson playing. And that came out beautiful. And that looks really, really awesome. Okay, it's another look altogether. And it looks really, really nice. And it's another aspect of what you can do. I'm about to get some masonite that I will then uh, use the white uh, subly or subly coat. And then on top of that, the clear coat. And then I will sublimate two panels made out of masonite. It's very, very smooth and glossy. So that should work out really well. And I just found out that you can literally sublimate to cork. Can you believe it? Apparently the the... The adhesive that they use to, because cork is kind of made, it's kind of produced by a process. I mean, the cork that you buy nowadays is produced that way. They must use something containing polyester. They just must. Because apparently you can directly, you can buy sheet cork at the craft shop and sublimate right to it. How it looks is kind of odd, but it is interesting. So... Yet another way. I mean, you could do a landscape and make it look like it's literally printing on, on live wood, you know, and then glue that to a black panel with a nice little border around it. Eh, another another way to display your work. And so far, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get some of that and try it just to see. It's, it's just nothing but a huge experiment, and it's working out really well and it's also you know a lot of fun for me because i'm getting away from just the, the 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 testing of this paper and that paper basically you're just printing standard images that's not fun okay that is not fun to do i like to do something a little bit more adventurous something that's going to allow me to explore things that i've never done before and that's that's what i'm trying to do to kind of revive my or what stimulate my juices so to speak my creative juices so you really get in a rut when you're just doing nothing but testing 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 okay well, i think i saw someone else here from whoa wait a minute hello from norway and this imaya van something i cannot pronounce this nor read it and uh, from Norway. So 1066 Internet from Hastings, UK again. Uh, NA4A4A. I'm glad I caught another one of your streams. Well, glad to have you here. Okay, the uh, young lady from Norway is saying hello to the other. Uh, the, the, from Sweden saying hello to the neighbor from Norway. And they are answering each other in their own language. That's wonderful. All right. So here is the uh, email. You got to use QImageRaffle at gmail.com. Make sure you do that. Don't let that slip by. You only have until the end of this live stream. And who knows how long we'll be on here. And my phone is, of course, ringing. Who is it? Ah, it's our daughter. I wonder how the party went. Nathan went to a another birthday party this afternoon. All right, so somebody likes the uh, Boss Barbie says those sublimation prints look amazing. Mike Vernon, hey people, hi. 
hit the like button. Yes. Go ahead. Hit it. Hit it. Smash it. I love the sublimation too. That is uh, Janet Diaz. The pictures are more vibrate. Yes. They do vibrate. They seem like they actually move. All right. Let's go ahead and jump over to our YouTube page. By the way, this is what it looks like when you are a first time visitor, by the way. Let's see what we have here. I had some pretty interesting um, questions the other day. Let's go ahead and hit that. Then we'll hit the subject of tonight. And this is gonna really blow your mind. And I wanna I wanna you got I want you guys to tell me right now on the chat how many of you have the PA hundred? How many of you have the PA hundred from North America? In other words, not the European version. This doesn't affect you guys, at least not yet. And the P600. We'll just start off with those two printers. P800, P600 from Epson. Tell me right now, any of you who have that printer, and whether you are using third-party inks and refillable cartridges, or a, a decoder board or anything, any such thing, to be able to use the third-party option here in the United States. I know I do, so we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, let's see what we got. These are brand new questions that I just got. Oh, this is an old video they're responding to. I love it. People are actually reading my old stuff or viewing my old stuff. I need to make this bigger so I can see it with my blind eyes. Okay, here we go. The same thing that I always tell people. Uh, Jose, can the ND3683 be used to reset genuine Epson cartridges? I don't know. I don't even know what that is. What is that, a resetter? I really don't know. Description on vendor website seems to say it only works on compatible cartridges. Then that is it. Then that is it. Um, I wish I knew everything, but I really do not. And these are kind of off the wall. Okay, last night... In the chat, the chit chat, I mentioned at the end whether you guys thought I should start to deal with some of the non photo printing families, which are a huge number of printers, because I get nothing but questions about these other printer models that are not necessarily related to professional level photo printing, which is what I really um, are involved in. I'm good at that, okay? That's what I'm good at. The rest of the stuff I'm terrible at. I know nothing about them. And so far, I got one answer from someone who said, no, don't do that. Stick with your your field. So, people, please, I know nothing about these printers. And I know I'm only reaching a very small number of folks here, but I have said this in several other videos that you're just wasting your time asking me this. Because there's no way I can answer you, at least give you a good answer that you can take home and actually put to use. Because I just simply do not know about any of this. I don't even know what that is. It may be a resetter of some sort. Why would you want to reset your Epson cartridges? They're unrefillable anyway, except for some of the older ones. So really, there's, there's no point on resetting your Epson cartridges nowadays. It just doesn't make sense. All right, and uh, let's see, RG, RV Traveler, who's here with us tonight, cover non-photo printers? No, too many printers, too much variety, and just what would make a good print. Keep your current focus. Everybody will benefit, specifically your family. Yes, I told in my, in my video that I wouldn't have time to spend with my wife. I wouldn't have time to spend with my grandson if I went ahead and expanded to include all of these non-photo tabletop, all-in-one, built-in scanner, you name it. No, I, I just don't really want to get into that. And I'm glad that uh, I did get some feedback on that. All right, here's what happened, guys. This is Bass Barbie. Oh, no, I came on Friday night, chit-chat on Saturday. Yeah, uh, what happened was that this is really embarrassing. This is to show you that just because I'm... I'm I'm at, at a certain level, doesn't mean that I cannot commit stupid mistakes. Well, I committed a big one. 
the SD drive that I have uh, that I do my videos on, and I use a, 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 a solid state drive in order to um, be able to uh, do my edits a little bit faster. They do work a lot better than regular mechanical type drives, especially for video work. It ran out of space. So when I then exported my or rendered my file, my job, my, my project to a final video, there wasn't enough room in the uh, drive to render it. So it only rendered half of it. And that's what I uploaded. I didn't even look at it. So that's what happened. We ended up with half a video. And so this morning I took it down and I re-rendered the proper uh, length of time. In other words, I had to remove some of the excuse me, some of the older jobs in the drive to make room for it. It's not a huge drive. It's only about a 200 gigabyte hard drive. So that's what happened. That's what happened. And now it's fine. The whole thing is there. Somebody called it the editor's, uh, the producer's edition or editor's edition. That was kind of funny. <laughs> but anyway, it should be there now. And if you guys want to watch it at a later time, you are welcome to do so. As I cover all the events of the week, including what we're going to talk about. And I don't want to delay it too much longer. But let me just go ahead and cover some of these other comments here because they are very nice and good and uh, may relate to everyone here as well. Brian Goldman says, I just purchased a Canon Pro 100. I am a beginner in big letters. The software everyone seems to be using is Photoshop. He just wants to know whether he should get Photoshop or whether he should get something a little simpler. Photoshop requires a learning curve. How about you get... I'm going to answer him later. Well, what about you get Lightroom or Photoshop Elements? It's just a lot easier to use. Doesn't require as much of a learning curve. It still allows you to print using a properly color managed workflow. So that's not a problem. You don't have to do the full blown Photoshop, although the sub subscription uh, rate is only like $9 a month. I think you could do. Lightroom and Photoshop for about 10 bucks a month, which is not bad at all. Oh, here's something funny. This video here, a not so well known secret about Canon printers. I go on for about 10 minutes talking about this subject. I've been chastised, insulted, uh, told that how dare I uh, waste their time or the uh, 10 minutes out of their life and so on. And I just kind of, you know, is water off a duck's back because in that video I tell a story and that's what it is a story about Canon printers for a change this video was fantastically informative and I really really hits home ethical printing it felt like therapy I'm Christopher and I am a printaholic funny thing though it's my highest earning video it's got over 200,000 views on it, I believe, by now. So there you go. And, you know, haters are everywhere, so that's fine. And this is Lazy Dog, of course. He's the one that said, Friday Night Chit Chat, the Director's Edition. Yep. Uh, he wants to know whether I was preoccupied with the royal wedding. Actually, watched that today with my wife. It was pretty awesome. I love all this stuff. We have been watching some, um, by the way, let's let's just be frank here. I don't watch too much American television. I'm always watching stuff from the UK, PBS and, and, and you know, stuff made in, in England, uh, some of the better channels and so on. I watch Acorn. I watch some stuff from Australia. It's just better television. The dramas are much better. The acting is much better. And the pronunciation is so much better. So no offense to American television, but that's usually what I watch the most with my wife because for us, we're not into anything modern. We're not into anything uh, trendy. So we just enjoy that type of television. And uh, we'll binge watch a lot of the stuff on Netflix. And it's a lot of fun. So we've been watching a lot about a show about called, I, I think it was called The Royals. And another one about uh, British castles of some sort. Some of the murder mysteries that are British. Those are always good. Well, said the Canon Pro 100, when I need to switch to a set of genuine inks, tanks for a project, do I just take out the PC tanks? Okay, this guy 
is adopting a method that I absolutely agree with. Have two sets of cartridges. If you're printing on the Pro 100 for sale and you want to take advantage of that 100 year lifespan, according to Canon, of their dye inks, and they are really, really good. They're the best, probably the best inks out there for you know that family of printers. Yeah, have a set of PC ink filled, have a set with OEM. All you gotta do is swap the set, one per cycle, you're running OEM, because there's so little ink in the printhead actually left from the previous set. So you can just push that out after the single perch cycle that usually takes place after you do a card change. So yeah, that's a good practice. You're gonna print something for sale, remove the set, pop the OEM set back in, perch cycle, print it, remove it, put back your PC inks, and then print your, you know, your flyers or whatever you're gonna print that does not require absolute longevity. Okay, here's one in Spanish that he wanted to know how to connect the Pro 100 and he just cannot understand whatsoever the English instructions. So I took him to the steps in Spanish. I hope that helped him out. All right, so that is it. Let's go ahead and jump over here and see if we got anything. We'll end up reading this one. I think this was a good one here. Um, here we go. I couldn't pass up. This This is, oh, I hope I can re retain my composure. Okay, but you guys are going to help me out, I'm sure. I couldn't pass up the Pro 100 for $70 net this past winter, despite the expert advice to not buy a printer if you won't use it frequently. Gee, I wonder who that was. Because I've been on this forum a lot. I'm about halfway through the original cartridges and wondering what to do next. <gasps> oh no, oh no, what should I do next? Buy some more carts, that's what you should do next. Do I go with PC inks and refill the whole lot when one runs down? Or do I fill only one card that needs it? Do I buy Canon inks and replace it as needed? If I go with PC inks, will they have the shelf life to last for a year or two? Do I buy a whole new printer next time it reaches $70? Oh my Lord. Yeah, you know what? The, uh, okay, hold on. I got to I gotta get a drink of coffee here. Hmm. Maybe coffee is the wrong drink. Obviously, you don't understand what it takes, right? So, since you're able to get Pro 100 for seventy dollars and an ink set for the same printer OEM, it's about hundred fifteen bucks. Then sure, go ahead and buy a new printer every time you need inks. Knock yourself out. Do that. Let me warn you. The P600, remember, had that problem with using the, the, the setup inks. I don't think the Canon Pro 100 has that problem. I don't think Canon is that mean yet. So you might be able to just buy that new printer, take those inks out of that printer box. You got a brand new printer sitting there. Okay, so you might as well put it away. Can you continue doing this every time you need inks, buying a new printer again? I hope the rebates last or continue. So, But here's what you really need to do. Don't buy a printer if you're not going to use it often. If you're not going to use it at the rate it is intended to be used. It has to be used. They're not going to tell you that the printer has to be used. Oh, my printer clogged. Well, of course it did. But they didn't tell me it was supposed it was supposed to be used often. I'm telling you. Okay? I'm telling you and please take that to the bank. Get a printer. I don't care if you pay $10 for that Pro 100. It is a $400 printer. Treat it as such. Treat it as if you did spend $400 on it and use it. Why did you buy the printer? I want to make beautiful prints at home. Well, then do that. Do that. Do not buy it and then realize, oh, I don't have enough work for that printer. No, not, not the right approach. Okay, and then if you're going to go ahead and switch over, do, do your research. Do your research to find out that, oh, no, you cannot, you know, just add PC ink or any other dye ink to that original yellow cartridge. You might get away with it maybe two times. The third refill, you're going to gel out, and then your print is going to be clogged, that yellow channel. And I believe you're not enough. I'm not going to call them that. 
to realize that, oh, I should stop printing because now my prints are not coming out the proper color. They're missing yellow because the yellow channel is not gelled and not allowing any ink to flow. So I have no sympathy. There's no way I'm going to even try to answer. Oh, some people did answer. How nice of them. I'm sorry. I, I, I just, I just can't. I, I know I should. My attitude should be better. Maybe tomorrow after I calm down, I'll look at these answers here and I will, you know, provide my uh, two cents and hopefully we will help the guy out. Okay, let's talk about tonight's subject. But first of all, I did saw some super chats here. Goodness. Let's see what we have here. I saw them somewhere. Oh, I know what happened. I know what happened. Here we go. When I increased the uh, size of my view here, I missed them. So we have a super chat from Jose Palacios for $9.99. And I believe this is uh, smart stickers. Again, 4.99. I believe that's Europe's or euros or is that uh, pounds? I'm not sure. I don't know my foreign currency. I'm terrible about that. Let's see if I missed any others. Okay, in case you did super chat me, if you have any questions, please post them. I will stop what I'm doing and I will take care of you because that is, that is in thanks to your support via super chat. Now let's go ahead and, and talk about tonight. So here is, after all of that talk, here's the nitty gritty here, what's happening with the PA-100. About a couple of weeks ago, I received an email, and I told you guys this last week, basically from Inkjet Mall reporting that people are having uh, problems with uh, new firmware that has been issued by Epson, rendering the PA-100 incapable of even using a decoder board, okay? How does it do that? Well, the decoder board comes preloaded with nine sets of serial numbers, nine sets of so-called uh, ID codes. Each color cartridge chip has an individual unique ID code. Those ID codes will never be repeated, except the problem is the printer records them. Some of your older printers that are able to run with refillable carts and chips ignore that. And so they allow the same ID number for color, yellow for instance, to be reused as long as the ink level shows up as full. So that's what happens when you reset it. You're resetting the ink level and not necessarily changing the ID code of that particular color. It remains the same, but the printer doesn't really care. The P600 currently does not care. It is not locked. The P400 currently, it is not locked in the United States or North America as a whole. Neither are the Europeans in other countries. P800, only in the USA and Canada are they locked. It will allow you to run your first set of refillable carts. Well, here's what I recommend you guys do. This is in conjunction to what you can now do to circumvent this problem. So what has Epson done? Let me make sure I, I, I lay this down in a systematic way. Epson has issued a brand new set of firmwares for each one of those printers, including many other brands, many other, not brands, but many other uh, models. I am here at this moment in the Inkjet Carts US channel, and there are three videos I recommend if you guys have, has anyone told me whether they have a P800 here? No, I guess none of you have a P800. Is that the reason? I don't see anything here. If you guys do, let me know, chime in, because this pertains to you. Unless you're using nothing but OEM inks, then you don't have to worry about that. But here's what happens. The firmware is issued it is passed down for those of you who have the automatic updater activated. It will then inject that firmware onto your piece 800. And if you happen to have been running on that first set of refillables, which is basically using the same ID numbers that every other refillable set in the whole world is using. But since it has never seen those numbers, it accepts them the first time. 
the very first time. You cannot reset those cartridges when they reach empty. Routinely, that's what you would do. They reach empty, you remove them, fill them, pop them back in, and that interruption of power resets the ink level back to full. Problem is, it's still the same ID code, so it will not accept it. Well, now we have the decoder board. The decoder board basically severs the connection between the printer and the actual cart chips. The decoder board has chips embedded within its board with 30 sets of ID numbers. Those 30 sets of ID numbers are real numbers that have never been used. Okay, so basically what I think they did was they bought 30 sets of carts, extracted the ID numbers from those cartridges, and created these uh, boards. I get a piece of PA-100, I install that board, my PA-100 has never seen those cartridges. I could take a given OEM yellow from my printer and give it to anyone else that has a PA-100. It will then record that number. I can bring it back to my printer and it will accept it as being whatever level it was in. Okay, But here's the catch. The board has 30 sets of numbers. So I can use it to reset all of my cartridges globally at once 30 times. Then I'm done. That's it. I'm done with that. Now, this firmware was issued and if I stupidly installed it, sorry, then the board will no longer be usable. Because what they have done is they have really figured out and how did they do it. They bought a decoder board and extracted all of these so-called ID numbers. They didn't really steal them. They didn't really leak them, I don't think. I think they literally got them out of 30 sets of carts. So now this firmware will inject those 30 sets of numbers into your printer's memory. So the printer will think, oh, I've already used 30 sets of cartridges. I need to see new, brand new numbers for me to continue working. That means you have to buy a new set of cartridges. Your board is no longer usable. It will only be usable on another printer that was never updated by that new firmware. The same thing applies to the P600. So here are videos that you can watch that show you how to use Let me turn, let me minimize Q image. How to use this software. WIC reset software. So it's going to load up all of the printers that I have. And it's going to load up a little help window here. And I'm not going to do it because of course I don't want to do that yet because I'm not affected by this problem, but some of you may be. So we're going to look up well, my PA-100 is turned off right now. So let's go ahead and do, for instance, 3800, 3880. So you select the Epson Pro 3880. Unfortunately, this printer is not supported. Okay, fine. Anyway, what you would do if I had my PA-100 turned on, which I do not right now, is that and you can see the ones that have the... Um, Question mark are printers that are not supported. Of course, Canon printers are not supported. Printers like the uh, 2000R. And basically you could do what this used to be used for in the past was to reset your waste ink counters. So let's go ahead and hit, click the status. So it's telling me that I have uh, printers ready to print. I have 21% yellow, 18%, 65 and so on. Gives you all of the levels and also to read the waste ink counters. So my ink counters are very, very low because I reset them a while ago. I'm only at 1.71% of 100%. And the second counter is at 3.16% of 100%. Had these been about 99%, then it would be time for me to reset the counters. And I should have been uh, modify that printer so that I can then externally collect that waste ink instead of being dumped in the internal pads. So then basically I would buy a reset key, $10, and I would go ahead and, and reset the uh, actual um, 
counters back to zero and start basically again so my printer will continue printing you can do a cleaning cycle you can do various types of testing it's really a nice usable tool you can do a firmware update now on the PA hundred you can do a firmware downgrade okay a downgrade and that is what's being discussed not here that is what's being discussed here so here he did a, a uh, I believe an iPhone shot of the process of downgrading a P600 and why would you want to do that because it actually removes the need of any chips what so imagine you can do the same thing on a PA hundred imagine this you've loaded up resettable carts that you didn't know only will work once as soon as one goes empty that's it you're stuck you need to go back to OEM because it will not allow you to go beyond that that's it one time only because it only recorded that that ID color okay and resetting that card will not reset the ID color to a new number the color of the ID that is for to a new number so you're stuck you have to go back to OEM so assume then you also like me install a decoder board so now I'm happily printing but I stupidly uh, upgrade my firmware now my decoder board is kaput well here's the process I have to remove the decoder board I have to reinstall all of the cables where they supposedly go in the motherboard and I have to install my original OEM cartridges luckily I store them when they were about 50 percent down okay and that's what I recommend any one of you who has a P800 P600 run your original cartridges as soon as they reach about a halfway remove them and begin your your uh, you know exploring third-party ink sources and if you accidentally upgrade and you're stuck you're you're locked out now you have to remove those original you have to remove not the original the resettable ones it's a little confusing and install the original cards now the printer's happy again okay it sees original cards it's going to allow you to print you have to have sufficient ink you have to be able to print in other words you have to be able to operate that printer then you perform the downgrade to a firmware that will render the ink level indicators no they will always read as full so it's now basically receiving the id code for that number but whatever the level of the cards were it now reads it as full so now you put that original set away once it is the process is done and then install your refillables back on and they will read as full because the firmware now just bypasses all of that it just reports everything as being full what are the dangers well the dangers are that you may forget to refill those cartridges because they're always reading full and um, we're going to be exploring this myself and mike lee are going to be exploring this and see what happens in the next several weeks this has been let's see this is six months old already see that six months old this one here is a month ago this is the workforce 4630 firmware downgrade always full watch these three videos if you're really interested if you don't even know one of these printers please watch them because those are not the only printers that are going to be affected as epson expands this little scheme of theirs of the new firmware they're going to lock out as many printers as possible yeah it's going to happen so you know learn how to how to defend yourself meaning do not automatically allow any other printers to to download anything and install anything if you want to do it on your own do it on your own but do not allow them to do it automatically or you'll be uh, quite surprised when all of a sudden you cannot use your third-party ink sources so what does this do does it render the decoder boards absolute absolute yeah probably that'll be the case that's why at this point I'm very ecstatically happy that my P800 is not affected by that and uh, I am I'll be you know what I'll be darned if I download any upgrades for it when I recently upgraded my computer I went ahead and reinstalled all my printers and that was one of the options that I made sure that I didn't tick the little box 
Also, download the actual driver, not the package, okay? The package includes all of the nasties in it. So download the actual driver, install that. That way it will not install any automatic updating tools. If you have any kind of a driver update utilities in your computer, be careful because sometimes they go on auto and they start up, up upgrading all of your drivers, including your printers and including possibly firmware as well. So be careful with that. That is it. I hope this doesn't affect anyone here so far, as far as I know. Um, Precision Colors is running perfectly fine with it. And they're using the decoder board as well. And everything is um, just working perfectly well. Let me make sure that I got this aligned correctly. Yes, I am. Okay, great. So now we have the full chat here. We'll be able to go ahead and answer some of these questions. Again, thank you guys for the uh, super chat. That's really nice of you. Janet Diaz says, uh, that would be a good video. Jose spills all the ink onto the floor. What? Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Somebody's really playing games with me. They want me to spill ink everywhere. Not going to happen. Especially that, remember that 40 plus pound box of ink I received from someone, all of the John Konings? That would never happen. Okay, Mike Cheney says, Jose, glad the 3D printer hangers are working for you. If you like them, I can send you some more. Yes, I would love them again. You can probably sell this. Look at that. It, they, work, they work perfectly. They have a serrated little edge. They have a little um, deeper triangle here, little tooth. That, that is the center point. So what I did was I realized really simply by measuring my center line, and then I align the hanger so that it's nice and horizontal, centered, using the little central mark that he included in the 3D print. And then these little buttons keep the bottom against the wall and away from the wall so that the picture actually floats. And this is gorgeous. I mean, I'm in love. I want some larger plates, but they are not cheap. This is like $2 a piece, a lot more than paper. Uh, but again, the look is just something you just cannot deny as being superior. Okay, Smart Sticker says, what printer are you using for sublimation? Well, I wish I was using a printer like Janet Diaz, but I'm not. I'm using a, a an old, old, tired Workforce 1100. It's been working beautifully. I installed a sys unit on it, and that is it. It's just cyan magenta yellow and black it actually has two black channels because it is really meant for just uh, document printing so it's about as low as you can get printer wise uh, i was going to go ahead and try to convert my older epson 1400 that has six channels and mike from precision color says he has a six color sublimation ink set that he would provide me so I'm going to go ahead and try to do that and see if I can come up with a little bit better. Uh, I don't know. How much can you improve? I don't know. This is about as gradual and really beautifully depicted, depicted uh, result. But I'm sure that having light magenta, light cyan will improve things even more. Now I'm trying to come up with a way to produce ICC profiles. I think I should be able to do it. I'm going to use the color monkey because it uses bigger patches and instead of the uh, i1 pro 2 which uses tiny little patches like these. This would be kind of difficult to um, read off a of polyester fabric if you get what I mean and that would only be used for the cases where I would print on a t-shirt but I'm not too concerned with that because I'll be printing mostly graphics. But for something like that on sublimatable aluminum, I would have to go ahead and, and waste two sheets of it to print my target. So I would print the image on from from the uh, um, Color Monkey software, generate the first set of patches, print it on a sheet of aluminum. No, print it on a sheet of paper, basically, with no color management, and then sublimate that to the aluminum, then scan the aluminum. 
and then create a second dairy set of patches and again print it on the transfer paper again with no color management and then go ahead and transfer it over to aluminum i would have to make sure that the the burning times are exactly the same i would have to make sure that temperatures are exactly the same and then scan that and hopefully hopefully if it does not produce an error while reading it then you could generate a profile that would then rely on the finished result on the aluminum surface uh, material now on the color monkey there is a way that you can print on a smaller or half a sheet of paper so i may be able to uh, do it on a couple of small five by sevens but most of the time you need letter size sheets of uh, media so that should produce a usable icc profile for a particular aluminum media and uh, it should really increase the fidelity that's the word i was trying to come up with of your images as they transfer over so the darkening the over over um saturation the over contrasty conditions that i was getting on some of the other uh, i think i had some 8 by 12 media that was not chromalux this is the expensive stuff this is the high quality stuff right here i was getting a bit of a shift towards slightly darker more saturated it was really wonderful for certain images unless i show you what they look like on the monitor you see then you would see oh wait a minute but you know by themselves oh they're beautiful so i want to be able to at least uh, print what i see on the monitor that's our always our goal so hopefully doing that will able enable me to have an icc profile that is actually usable in this convoluted type uh, process of, of dye sublimation because it's not something that you directly print on the metal it has to be transferred onto the metal okay prestigious pieces do you mind advising what setting could you recommend for printing canvas photo she's 350 gms gsm on the pro 1000 media type and profile well don't they have a canvas setting let me see here let's take a quick look at our pro 1000 settings here we got canvas right here fine art papers canvas that's it that's what you will use unless it's a um you know i believe that that assumes it is a a matte canvas and uh if not you would have to experiment with others i have not printed canvas yet on that printer now i have some uh, a few sheets a couple of sheets each actually of uh, the breathing color um sample pack that i just recently obtained and i'm gonna go ahead and do that and uh, a lot of them are around the 300 something gsm weight so we'll see yes um i wish i could read that right here folks right here yeah hit like people and support yes click those likes remember the uh, live streams earn nothing the only earnings come from super chatting so consider that if you are here with us tonight again remember if you tried out already for the uh qmish ultimate go ahead and super chat a few bucks my way that that keeps everything going and that keeps me motivated for the next one because again like i said this earns nothing i can put in three hours and two hours preparation and basically earn nothing for this particular block of time on youtube they really don't look at it as as anything special in their eyes it's like it's uh they think it's a privilege that you earn to be able to, to live stream and again i kind of agree with that but you know they should make it a little bit easier for us to um, gain monetarily when we do this long extensive type of live streams smart sticker says that is a good point a good hint i'm using cork so give it a try for sublimation thanks thank you i do my coatings with clear varnish yeah you're the you're the person who was doing um i believe it's the automobile lacquer it's not really varnish it's a lacquer 
And um, yeah, uh, the raw cork, if it's commercially produced, cork sheeting apparently works. I saw it demonstrated on the Condi uh, Systems uh, website, their live stream the other day. Philip Ferrano says, Hola, Don Jose. Does the plastic shelving sway back and forth when printing? Actually, no, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Uh, there's so many printers on them already that it provides enough weight. Now, my little movable table with the uh, the uh, Workforce 1100, yeah, that thing moves like it's, you know, like it wants to fly out of the room. That's the one that I'm using for sublimation printing. No, the other ones are pretty, pretty sturdy. Uh, they don't really, I mean, it might move a fraction of an inch, but nothing whatsoever. Smart stickers just send the email. Good. Keep it going. Keep it going. So we have a P800 user in Norway. Uh, you will not be affected by this problem that I just reported on. Uh, the European versions of the P800 are not yet locked. Just be careful. You do not upgrade the firmware needlessly. Firmware, for me to upgrade firmware, it's got to be due to a physical problem a mechanical problem that the printer generates or uses or, or, or does that can be fixed with a firmware update that would be seriously something i would consider doing and you know that that would be the only reason now if it's if it tells you oh we are fixing this we're fixing that but then behind your back we're also going to be injecting 30 sets of uh, id numbers that's sneaky and that will kill your printer from any chances of using any third-party sources john pensadulo has uh p800 and p600 yeah north american model so you know where i'm coming from but i do believe you are selling your work so you're probably not too concerned with using third-party sources if that is the case uh please share that with us if not let me know and then we can continually discuss and when i find out more things i think I think Mike Lee is really seriously considering doing the downgrade with the always full uh, result for his PA-100 and removing that decoder board. We'll see. I really don't want to do it on mine. I wish I had a couple. If I had a lot of money, I would have multiple printers here for you know testing and experimenting and sacrificing, but I don't. So I really don't want to take the chance with that only PA-100 that I do have. That's at least until now, happily printing. Okay, after that, so between the two Super Chats, Mike Vernon said, Jose, when are you going to do the bloopers video? I think it would be fantastic, like your very first video you produced. Yeah, that was horrible. Um, the last video that I did was full of bloopers. I would have to go back, and uh, I edit them out. So on the actual edit, they're gone. So I would have to go back and load raw, you know, all the raw footage onto a new one and just basically cut and paste all of the bloopers. I do cuss. So those would have to be bleeped out, but uh, you'll get a big kick out of that. I'm going to go, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take your uh, uh, idea and suggestion and do that. And yeah, um, do it, uh, Joe, US TV sucks. Yeah, okay. That would be viral. Yeah, I hope so. That would be great. Janet Diaz is laughing. She says, that would be a good video. Jose spills all the ink onto the floor. Oh, you don't want to see that. I tell you, I have done that. I have done that already. And uh, yeah, you want to see my wife screaming. You want to, you're going to clean that up, right? Laughing out loud. Yeah, no, not going to happen. Philip Ferrano says, what do you think of Affinity software? I have not really used it extensively. I'm going to go ahead and start using it, though, definitely. But right now, what I have is that Luminar. Let me just give you a quick look, see at what it looks like. I'll try to not cover myself with it. Actually, no, it's going to be actually be under my little view here. So... I just installed it uh, a few months ago because, again, it was a Christmas gift that I received. So Luminar successfully installed. Oh, that wasn't even the uh, icon. Sorry about that, guys. So you open up an image. And, for instance, 
we have here the Luminar image and here is a bunch of versions that you can actually play around with and then once you find a preset that you like you come over here and just adjust it to your heart's content I mean you can do tons of different adjustments here let me move it out of the way so you can see what I mean so here we go so as you can see you can do highlights you can do your shadows and it's basically similar to the raw uh, type uh, workflow that you use in, in Lightroom, but probably has a lot more options. And I think I'm going to really enjoy working with this. And again, I appreciate the gift. And it's going to be a lot of fun to play with it. And I may do a few videos. All of the videos that they provide are a lot, excuse me, a lot better produced than anything I can come up with. But I'll just give it my special touch, if you know what I mean. So there'll be some of these in the future coming up. Yeah, Victor Logan thinks that would be funny, my um, blooper video. So I will go ahead and consider doing that. I do have enough footage and I should really begin to save some of that separately as a separate project. And uh, how much of that would you really want to see? Like five minutes worth? Because there'll be like 50 of them in five minutes you have no clue how many bloopers i generate and yet you know the editing and the uh there's a, a a morph cut that you can use in in adobe premiere that will literally go from to here in a smooth manner it'll look like nothing ever happened and so that's why it can look smooth but really it was just full of flubs and and problems Yeah, um, I notice a lot of people don't have the common sense to stop printing when something goes wrong because that's what the manufacturers teach people. Mm. I guess that's a, that's fair business is business. I think we're referring to um, the thing with Epson that I discussed. Well, you know, I mean, in their defense, if I was Epson and I want you to buy my expensive inks, I'll do everything within me that's legally uh, allowable to stop you from doing that. You can argue all you want. It will be, you can say, well, I don't want to buy Ford gasoline or, or Chevrolet gasoline. I want to buy, you know, gas from the local station. Oh, no, you have to buy it from the dealer. I don't think it's the same thing. I don't think it applies. I don't know too much about the laws involving this sort of a subject, but hey, I'm just trying to come up with an option that we can still use our beloved third-party inks and not have to worry about the cost. And, uh, yeah, someone else has a PA-100. I haven't used any refills. Okay, well, if you have not, then you will not be affected by this. And I believe you're in Europe, so you also not affected regardless unless you upgrade. I don't know what they're going to be doing for the European... Uh, people, I think it's going to involve everyone. Mike Vernon, Mike C, if you don't win, if I don't win tonight, I plan on buying a copy of your software for Windows. That way, I will have both Luminar and QImage to work with when I get set up at home after I semi-retire. John Pensadulo has both of them. I think we already covered that. Uh, oh, my audio is a little bit low. Let me move my microphone closer to me how's that is that getting better i hope so i'm kind of a probably leaning a little bit too far back i normally just lean this way i'm trying to get a little bit closer to the screen because the monitor i mean the monitor's here of course but the microphone is right here in front of me uh, mike vernon wants to know uh how many oh i cannot i cannot turn up my volume one volume I can turn it up on my capture program and uh, if I do it too high that starts to introduce a little bit of a, a problem uh, so I can have it kind of set at the correct level without going and start clip clipping a little bit on the audio so I hope it's a little bit better now let me know if it's better 
and I can just leave it the way it is. I had moved it too far out of the way earlier today because I wanted to access something here. It's all sitting here in my little clutter area. It's not very big. Okay, so Mike has received 18 entries so far. And in about eight, about 50 minutes from now, he will pick the winner. All right, somebody, I think Mike Burnham says uh, that he accidentally double-clicked the send button. And uh, Mike Cheney says that it just shows up as one, so don't worry. Uh, Cliff Medina wants to know which six-color printer. Well, I was going to cover the 1400, okay? So that's the one I'm going to be converting next to sublimation. And the reason being is that really no reason. It's just to experiment to see if I will get a little bit better color fidelity with six colors rather than just a straight RGB in black. Joaquin Parchment says, Hi Jose, I'm very happy with my Canon Pro 1000. Thank you for your videos. Great. I hope you are uh, beginning to understand the way this girl behaves. It's uh, quite a different type of printer and one that requires a lot of love and a lot of patience from the user. Smart stickers using an Epson W1500. I guess that is the equivalent of the 1400. Got the Spider 5 Studio calibrated the screen, but I have problems with people's faces. Comes reddish. Yes, you. Yes, you what? Um, I cannot speak for the Spider 5 Studio. Um, you may need a custom profile. That's, that's what I'm suspecting happens. Are you sure that you are printing with a proper color managed workflow? Are you turning off? If you are using, let's just go back and, and review this. If you are using a color managed editor, then you have two choices. Either let the printer driver control color or have the editor control color by using an ICC profile, not both. Reddish results overall, Usually, you know, always, always comes down to double profiling, meaning both the application and the driver are controlling color. So you want to avoid that like the plague. So what you need to do is go to your Epson driver and turn color control off and then use a profile that will match the paper, the printer, and of course the inks that you are using. Now, if your, if your so-called calibrated monitor is not calibrated correctly, then you're going to be adding reddish, extra, extra red, or whatever the color is to your image because it's already off to begin with. So you're trying to overcorrect that, and it's going to result in whatever you send to the printer. That's what the printer is going to produce. So assuming the printer is producing correct output, and again, how do you determine that? Well, 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 funny you should ask. Let's go back. No, actually, no. I'm going to go ahead and open up my picture folder and give you a glimpse. And all of this is available in the Facebook group. So in case you have not joined that, this is where you can get these images. Test files. Let's go ahead and open. Um, let's see. These things do not open very well here in the regular Windows environment, especially the Windows Photo Viewer. See, it looks extremely dark. Let's go ahead and load it into Photoshop. I wonder who's calling now. It's a wireless caller. Nothing, nobody I know. I used to have a nice little blocker, but my wife got tired of it and had me remove it. And I always wonder, why did you ask me to remove that? Now you're getting daily, daily calls from people you really don't want to talk to. But anyway, yeah, I have to, I have to remain, you know. All right, so let's go ahead and open this file. We're going to open it in a color managed environment. As you can see. Hey, Joe. Yeah. From Mike? Yeah. 
Yeah. He said there's a problem with your screen. Not me. That's his problem. Well, he just called. You yeah. Want the number? No. Okay. Okay. Apparently, um, Mike Lee is having a problem receiving the uh, broadcast. Um, I cannot stop right now to talk to him, but uh, I assume you guys are seeing everything here correctly. Let me know if you are also uh, experiencing any problems. I know that uh, most of you are not. Anyway, here's a print uh, image that you should be printing, and you're going to print it like this. You're going to op you're going to sorry. You're going to open, up, open up the image and do not edit it at all. I have my Photoshop set to ask me about any mismatched color spaces. This is Pro Photo RGB. So it's going to ask me to change it to Adobe RGB, which I don't want it to do that. I want it to remain as a Pro Photo RGB. So this is what happened. When I go to open it, it's going to give me this warning. And I say, do not. See, Pro Photo RGB, change it to Adobe RGB 1998. And I'm going to say no. I'm going to answer. I think that's my key. Hello? No, that's him again. Hi. Hi, Mike. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. Let me. Oh, I see what you mean. Let me go ahead and reset this. That's not good. Okay, are we good now? I hope we are. Let me know. I need to get a uh, feedback right now if we are on. Everyone can see me? All right, good. Yeah, we've been having a lot of problems with uh, high winds, uh, severe storms, and uh, that really doesn't help the local internet. And also, when it comes to um, using a broadcast software, any little glitch just taxes the computer to the point where it just starts to act up and not in a good way so let's go ahead and move this over a bit more and this way anyway so i don't know how much you got to see of the um, standard image but anyway you load the standard image in photoshop you tell it not to change the color space. Leave it at Pro Photo RGB. Do not edit it. Okay, do not edit it in any way. You're going to go ahead and open up your image. You're going to hit File, Print. And then once you are in your printer's dialog box, for example, we'll just use 
the Pro 100. How about that? You're going to go to Printing Preferences. And I'm going to click on the paper that you want to use. How about if we pick, I don't know, Photo Paper Pro Luster. That's one of my special highest loved papers. High quality. What was one high quality? Page setup. Maintenance. Nothing. How about main? Nothing there. That's fine. Nothing special. Okay, now here's the magic little click that you have to make. Photo printing. Must be. Always photo printing. When you do that, you're going to change the paper. Type again. That's the beauty of this driver. Letter size. So now we're ready to print. Not borderless. We're going to click on this little box. So matching and none. And then OK. And apply. Now we're ready to print. So we're going to print that on Photo Luster with no color management or no color matching. Photo printing. High quality. Print. Okay. What comes out of that printer, and this, this will apply to any other printer type. What, what comes out of that printer should be pretty, I don't know if I have one here. But let's assume that this is a standard image. Okay, you're going to look at it, and you're going to determine visually, is this neutral? Yes. Is this too light or too dark? It's perfect. Are the colors correct? Do the little kids' faces, skin tones look correct? Too red, too green, too yellow, too blue. No, they look perfect. That's what you should be getting out of your P or P800, P400, uh, whatever. Pro 100 in this case. It should be fine. Whatever you then edit in your monitor, if it comes out off, because remember, you did not edit this image whatsoever. You're not supposed to. You leave that unadulterated. You print it. And at that point, you will determine if that printer by itself can produce a correct rendition of that perfect image. And now you establish that, yes, the printer can indeed produce a perfect image of that, a perfect print of that image. Now you start editing in your monitor. Oh, by the way, if you take that printed image to your monitor, it probably will not match because your monitor is set differently than the correct output. You have to match your monitor to this output. Okay, once you do that, once you got these two entities matching, you're viewing this in your in your computer screen. You printed it without any interference adjustment in your part. Okay, you bring the output. The output looks correct, but it doesn't match your monitor. Then it, your monitor is the culprit. Your monitor is not properly calibrated. It has to be brought to a condition where it now matches the output that you received out of your printer of that perfect so-called reference image. That's why we call it a reference image, because it is set to the correct, correct colors. Everything is perfect about it. And it should print close to perfect without any kind of adjustment in your part. If you try to edit it, it's going to throw it off. So now, you go back and you print something that you edited on your so-called calibrated monitor you thought was calibrated, and it's off. Your skin tones are not matching correctly, and so on. Then guess what? It wasn't the printer. It's your image you sent to the printer is off. Oh, but it looks perfect on my monitor. Yeah, that's because you adjusted it to look perfect in your monitor. That is not perfect to begin with. Just see, it's a slippery slope. And one that you need to kind of grasp and really, really get so that you understand what is going on here between monitor, the relationship between monitor and print output. It's, it can be a long process that you guys need to learn. Again, it took me, I'm embarrassed to say, two years to get it. So it happens. Okay, let's see what we missed before my stupid screen went black. Oh, I hate when that happens. And I didn't do anything to this. You notice, I'll show you what this looks like. See, you see that multi-screen? It's like a mirror, 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 mirror. This is the broadcast program doing this. And I have it here on right now. You can see my volume bar is moving. 
and uh, if I stop streaming I will stop streaming so I only minimize it so it stays on any interruption then will stop the stream and it will then kill the actual background so I have a set to to project my little picture of me in the corner and then the screen at the same time so that's what it is doing right now I'm not able to see myself on the screen by the way only what is on the actual so-called desktop so let's make sure that we didn't miss anybody here while we were screwing things up <laughs> yeah somebody was um, somebody I, I I didn't understand what somebody had replied and he was just cracking up about me cracking on the person on the uh, DP the preview misunderstanding the uh, relationship between uh, uh, what you need to do when you buy a new printer I guess okay oh boy All right, so Smart Stickers has been experimenting using a clear varnish for automobile paint. I think, again, it's, it's actually uh, not varnish itself. It is a, a uh, lacquer. I cannot get a profile for sublimation. Do I need to print the color patches and sublimate? I am printing on paper and scan. That is, but not good. Yeah, you cannot print on paper and scan. You have to print on paper, then transfer, and then scan the transferred result because it's always going to look vastly different when you transfer it. So you cannot do that. Bass, Bass Barbie says the audio is better. Good, I have it a little bit closer. So I hope that helps. I should have moved it from the very beginning up closer. Uh, Smart Stickers is using an Epson 1500 with six channels. RV travelers still black screen yeah so everybody was getting a black screen hopefully that's that's done okay Jose you always refer to third-party inks in general what other third-party inks have you used and how do you like them I have used of course precision colors I have used inkjet cards uh, inks I have used uh, ink owl I have used inks from a company that's now gone con called inkjet uh, fly that's gone. I have used inks from uh, Inkjet Mall. I have used inks from Germany. From, uh, I believe they're called, uh, gosh, oh, uh, I don't remember now. Anyway, a three-letter acronym for their inks. And so far, John Cohn are the best inks. A close tie between Precision Colors and Ink Owl. Inkjet Carts, kind of a, a far third because they don't have a very good gloss. OCP from Germany, terrible gloss. Okay, the magenta is practically matte. Wonderful for matte work, but terrible gloss. So that's about it. Um, you know, if other companies want to send me some inks, I'd be more than happy to test them, but they don't want to send me their inks, believe me. So that just means that they don't have enough confidence in their products. Mike, Mike Cheney called me, and uh, I thought it was the wrong Mike. I thought it was Michael Lee because he had a problem with his computer today. So I thought when somebody said, my wife said that uh, somebody was having problems with the broadcast, I thought it was Michael Lee from Precision Colors because he's been having some problems. But apparently it was me on my end with a black screen. And uh, our young lady bailed out from Europe. And that's uh, good night. That's late for her. She shouldn't have been here that late. When you clicked on the Luminar icon, the screen went black. Yeah, that's what happened. That is what happened. Okay. Yeah, my screen is black. Yes, I know. Black, 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 black. We are having problems. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody yelled, blooper reel. Hmm. Okay, now I'm back, 
and I typed in are we on and everybody said that we are now back even in Spanish está bien better now okay Mike C says raffle update 19 entries come on guys load up those entries man we got we got how many people here 40 no we have 35 people don't you guys want Q Image Ultimate? I guess this must be Mac users. By the way, uh, Q Image One really works well. It is so simple and so streamlined. And uh, again, I may start using Q Image One. It is just so lovely of a program to use. And um, I've been using the new um, programmable or scheduled. Um, utility for printing your perch sheets and I got five printers loaded onto the uh, queue and every two days they produce a perch sheet for me and they stay nice and happy no more uh, needless cleaning cycles from my Canon printers they just they just wake up and start printing so that's the way to do it guys save a lot of ink put your inks to uh, printing photos instead of being wasted on cleaning cycles that do nothing but clean your main you know fill up your maintenance cards or your pads okay victor logan jr so i found that once i upgraded my monitor and calibrated with spider my images match my screen yeah if you do it correctly you will get a screen that is displaying color values and it's nothing but math it's just numbers rgb it will display those values correctly. What would be the point of a certain shade of red to be displayed as a certain shade of orange? So if you see that, then you're going to adjust your colors so that it's back to being red the way you think it's supposed to be. But in reality, now you're turning it into magenta. See what I mean? So a properly calibrated monitor that is correctly displaying your values is imperative. That's why I use this monster right here. This is my baby right here. So I use that every two months on this monitor to bring it back to perfect condition. And so what I see, I can rely on being correct. So anything I edit, if I add two of any color, if I add five of any color, I want it to then translate to the same increase of that color on a print. I don't want to have to guess. Guessing is what I was doing with this. I was getting darker, more saturated, a little bit of a yellow shift. I would have to create some sort of setting to counteract that. But what if I just had an ICC profile that I can then match my output on this type of process to what I see on the screen? That would be ideal. We're working on that, but that would be ideal. All right, so the raffle will end in 20 minutes. It will end early tonight because this is not going as we planned. Uh, hopefully, uh, future dates will be a lot more smoother. But again, this is live. This is what happens. It's just like live TV back in the 50s. Victor Logan Jr. says, I found that once I upgraded my... Yeah, okay, I read that already. Philip Verano says, Ay Dios mío, laughing out loud. I don't know what you're saying. Ay Dios mío for... But please share with us. So that means, oh my God. Mike Vernon says he cannot super chat for some reason. Hmm. Let's try it. Try it now, Mike. Here. There you go. I can send myself a super chat, but that would not be correct. Okay, Cal Johnson just sent a super chat. I was wondering what was going on. That was weird. Uh, let's see. Bruce Warren, I used Color Monkey. Let me see what I missed. I think I skipped. Okay. The really fancy channels, they have a moderator separately keeping tracks of the super chats and the uh, chat screen, but this is just a little of me doing this. Got to do it all again. Bear in mind, I'm talking about sublimation profiles, inks, and print. Um, 
Yeah, okay. Um, I would have to go back to see what you were referring to. Let's see. I don't know what you meant by that. I use a color monkey to profile my screen and papers, print colors on the Pro 100 look accurate. However, shadows are darker than screen. Yeah, shadows are always darker than screen. Screen's black backlit. You get you get a ton more dynamic range on the screen than you do on paper. Reflective light will not allow. You know how people, the experts actually look at a at a print with transmitted light. Put it over a light and you will see your shadows come up just like you see them on your screen. Of course, that's not how you properly look at a print, but keep in mind that a print on paper will lose about 80% of the dynamic range you see on the screen. Just keep that in mind. You might want to increase your shadow detail a little bit more uh, on your editing program just to counteract that effect. But again, what I normally do, and I thought I was going to do that this week, but so many new things came up that I decided against it. But next weekend, for sure, I'm going to do a editing type video. Not video, but live stream. And hopefully it will, nothing will happen to my my transmission here. But I'll show you what I how I treat a landscape, how I treat a, a portrait, how I treat a variety of images when I'm editing them on Photoshop to ensure that I get the best results dynamic range-wise on paper. Okay? So Cal Johnson donated a $2 Super Chat. How should I store inks? Uh, because cards resell. Uh, I don't know what you mean by that. Are you trying to resell your cards? If you were using, for example, a printer that has cartridges that can be refilled, sure, you can resell them, but then why do that? when you can refill them yourself. I don't know what you mean, but I thank you for your $2 Super Chat. But go ahead and please, uh, you know, give us a little bit more information as to what you are asking here. Mike Cheney says, final reminder, five minutes left, 21 entries. So far, email qimageraffle at gmail.com to win QImage Ultimate for Windows. Next message, you will be the winner. Philip, Philip Ferrano, should I email again? No, only once, guy, one chance, come on. Only one chance per person. Mike Werner says live chat is in slow mode. Let's see why that's happened. Oh boy. I would have to go back and set that. Hmm. And I really don't want to screw this up. I am a little bit uh, more cautious now after that little snafu. So... We'll leave it as is. People are still commenting. I'm still receiving the uh, comments, so we'll leave it as is for the time being. Hopefully, it'll be okay. Victor Logan has provided us with a $10 Super Chat. Appreciate that. Victor, again, if you have a question, please ask. Cal Johnson, don't forget to ask me what you mean by that. How should I store inks because cards resell? And you left it as a question mark. Um... Cartridges can be stored, okay. If they have a vent, go ahead and tape them shut. If they if they have not been unsealed, they'll last for years that way. Now, once you open them up and unseal them, that's when the clock starts ticking down. So again, please ask what it is that you are actually asking about. Re again, just provide that question again. Oh, I see, yeah. Ah, uh, shoot. Let me see. Let me go back to Photoshop. I mean, not Photoshop, to um, YouTube and see if I can fix that. We don't want to slow down the chat, do we? Definitely not. I hope I'm still on. Now I'm a little bit worried. Let me hit the uh, live stream button.
and he seemed to be on here is the live stream chat slow mode is on so let's see what we can do here to fix this We'll do that. I always had it on slow mode, guys. So I don't know what, why today is not uh, working uh, better. Let's go ahead and minimize that. How's that? Try it out. Slow, slow mode is off. Chat away. Okay, let's try it. Go ahead, say something, anyone. I just want to test this because I've always had it on slow mode. Anyone? Let me make sure that I can see you guys. Yep, I can see you guys. Okay, now we're cooking. All right, good. That's what we want to hear. So let's go ahead and uh, address some of these things that have not been addressed. And then we'll, uh, I think Mike Cheney's about to call a winner. Okay, so we fixed the slow mode problem. And Mike Cheney says that email was sent. And it wasn't this person. I was about talking about red skin on the people with sublimation prints. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, it's very difficult to get perfect color. That's why you have these systems that you can actually buy from companies like Condi, Sawgrass, that are integrated systems. They have uh, dedicated printers. Very difficult for those who adapt just any old printer with any old inks like I am doing. And yet, I got a picture of my wife and she looks totally natural. She's surrounded by flowers and, you know, she looks really great in a overcast type environment so again I use Cormalux material and that seems to be really a good material to get a good rendition color wise it's a very good rendition there's no exaggeration of color no extra saturation added and so on that's the problem that I was having with the off-brand um, 8 by 12 material that I've been using from eBay only because it's about a dollar seventy a sheet as opposed to nearly two dollars for this five by seven and also probably about four dollars for an equivalent eight by ten so yeah the huge difference in quality between the two uh, I don't know what to tell you about that problem with skin tones again it's all super experimental you really really don't know what you're going to get until you take it off the heat press and peel off the transfer sheet Again, I saw Victor Logan here donated $10 Super Chat. Thank you so much. And he's got to go, so he uh, has bailed out. Great. Victor Logan, uh, have have to go, guys. Have a good, good all. Okay, I understand. Cal Johnson, I harvested from larger carts, and I can get credit from office. Oh, okay, for my carts. So I then just store a lot of inks. Yeah, you, uh, get yourself some nice uh, plastic, like polypropylene-type bottles. The kind that you would use for a lab, almost. Uh, Nalgene is a good brand. Nalgene, N-A-L-G-E-N-E. -E. Get them from Amazon.com. And just basically decant your inks. Seal them up really good. Keep them in a, in a you know temperature control area, cool area. Try not to contaminate anything. And they should last. I mean, people recommend not more than a year. So it depends. I mean, if you're not going to use them, don't take them out of the cartridge yet. You know, um, that's what I do. I have a lot of big cartridges that I haven't even cracked into yet. And so I don't want to, you know, prematurely start extracting inks unless I truly need them simply because of that. 
1066 internet says live chat has always been on slow mode with no says live chat well not any longer now i know about that and thank you guys for letting me know i didn't want to make you guys uh wait when you're trying to submit a chat or a uh, comment bass barber says i don't plan on using third-party inks are my old cards of any use to anyone i am in the uk or is there a green way to dispose of cards well so-called recycling systems basically most of the time these recyclers end up selling the whole lot of hundreds at a time on ebay and i don't know what kind of what what that does to help it really doesn't because as long as okay as long as they are being redistributor among people but eventually they do end up in the landfill and i hate that you should be able to uh, reuse these cartridges one way or another so what cartridges are you using bass Barty? i don't remember what your printer was again i would have to go back and i don't want to mess this up any longer than i have to so if they are cartridges that can be refilled then by all means you can sell them to others if they are not, then you'll have to dispose of them to some sort of recycling program you may have in your area. Elvin, I already have eight colors of OEM ink for my Epson 3880 refillable cartridges. Only photo black ink is hard to find or expensive. Oh, actually, not really. Uh, there's there's some good sources on eBay for photo black, and the photo black is the same for either the 3880 or the 3800. So get inks for like. Printers like the 4800 and or the 4880 or anything anything that uses a K3 Ultra Chrome Epson inks, I can get 700 ml for about $100, even less sometimes. So keep that in mind. Okay, now that we uh, got away from the uh, slow mode, I got a ton more comments here. And Mike Vernon says, now we are working, are we in photography? Hi, Jose. Peter Jorth. Hi there, Bass Barbie, you're, we're quick. Mike Vernon, yeah, man, that's it. Elvin, hi. I think your streams are small enough so that where you do not get too much spam without slow mode. Yeah, I've watched other people's live streams. There's a, a YouTube creator type live stream that comes out of uh, Thailand. There's a couple of American guys that are living in Thailand. And good Lord, talk about garbage on the chat unrelated and just like what are you doing on that chat if you're not going to provide something of use to the rest of the folks that are in the same chat at that time we have 36 people still here and i yeah bass barbie bass barbie says i think we see the comments faster than you haha <laughs> seems to work the same here good bless you the so the reddish skin tones comes from the sublimation method. Yeah, it does. And I don't know, what are you sublimating onto? Please let me know uh, if it's something like what I just showed you, or is it a shirt? Is it any kind of a polyester type material? Is it some substrate that you're buying commercially? Let me know what it is. And maybe, maybe I can give you some hints. But again, it's really a crapshoot. You really don't know how it's going to come out until you peel that off. You get to the point where you can get pretty predictable. And at least with this material that I'm using here, I, I, I'm really happy with it. So I'm willing to pay the little extra to be able to have a little predict predictability. That's it. Mike C is uh, announcing the winner. Bratis, Branislav Turnka. Wow, great. Uh, goes by b-r-a-n-o-t congratulations awesome so he will email you the software link in a few minutes awesome enjoy q image everybody's saying congratulations bass barbie has a pro one printer oh the pro one <coughs> of course pgi 29 cartridges Easily refillable. I developed a method to do that, and that is what I've been doing. And I got pro precision colors involved with that, mainly because we both realized that this is such an easy cartridge to refill. Unfortunately, it was not resettable, so single-use chips have to be obtained 
from China. There were some really uh, bad ones that actually caused problems with your printer. But now the source that we are using is very, very reliable. And so far, I have not had a single error. In fact, it recognizes them as actual original chips. So that is good. Uh, so yeah, sell those cartridges. You can get probably at least, at least $4 each for them, okay, from users. They will have to be modified a bit because the Chinese chip that replaces the original chip, they're single-use chips just like the original ones, cannot be reset. But in the rear, they have a little globule of resin that covers up the electronics. That little fat little bubble of resin will not sit properly, so you have to carve out a little round spherical a cavity in the uh, chip compartment. I sell those already pre-modified because I, I mill them on a milling machine. So they are, you know, very, very accurately milled. And so that way you can then slip the chip right into position easily and then go ahead after you refill them, you can use them again. And I'm using mostly OEM inks on my Pro 1. I harvest them from large 700 ml cartridges. That's the way to go. So I'm able to not only save a lot of money, I'm able to print highest quality prints on a refillable printer. And Brannot says, oh boy, I never want anything in my life. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoy that. Again, if you have any questions, if you have any learning uh, curve issues, go to the QImage site. They have a vast library of videos there that you can access. And also a forum, if I remember correctly, right, Mike? A user forum. And Mike is congratulating them. There's a first time for everything. Thank you for being with us tonight. See that? I told you guys to be here. Uh, awesome. In a 4 a 4 a what would be a good way to calibrate for disk printing? There's really no way to do that, at least that I know of because how are you going to print a chart on a disk? Um, by trial and error, I suppose, a lot of the disk printable surfaces, um, they differ quite a bit, and you will get different results with every brand that you buy. So I, I really don't know what to tell you. I um, How could you find a similar paper and repurpose the profile? Well, Good luck. I really do not know how you would approach that. That's a good question, though. I really i am stumped. Prestigious P. All the inks, all the ink cards on the Pro 1000 are showing low. Yeah, like, like mine. And I have a full set of genuine Canon inks. Does the Canon Pro 1000 utilize as much of the ink as possible? Yes, it does. Or can I extract some ink out of the empty cards? No, let them go empty. They are empty. They are empty. These cartridges are gravity fed. The exit port is on a slope, so all of the ink actually migrates out. And it goes into your internal containers that are inside the printer. When one card goes empty, even if you're in the middle of a print, you can open up the uh, door, remove that empty card, pop a new one in, close the door, and the print continues printing. It never stops printing. So you can do that that way if it gets to the point where you actually have to do that. If not, let it go empty and then replace it. At some point, they're probably all gonna go empty pretty much one after the other. So fortunately, there are no ink purges that take place on printers that have stationary cartridges. Only printers that have cartridges that ride on top of the print head, like the Pro 100, the Pro 10, the Epson type printers that are not your professional level printers. Those printers that have cartridges that move this way and that way, you will generate a purge cycle every time you change one card or 10 cards so that's why i always stress change the complete set man and that way you reduce your purge cycles but on the pro 1000 let them go empty one card at a time on the pro 800 the p800 same thing one one at a time as they go empty 3880 the same thing any card any printer with stationary non-moving cards P600, the same way. Those cartridges do not move. They do not produce a purge cycle when you replace just one, two, three, or ten. So no need to use that 
that recommended practice that I preach about. Art of winning photography prestigious P when the printer says the card is empty and to replace it, the card will be completely empty. See? That comes from uh, a Pro 1000 user, by the way. Michael Cheney says the QImage user form is at wait. I don't think I can post this. Just Google Mike Cheney Tech Corner and the form will come up on your first search. Yeah, do that. Do that and join them. Look at the QImage One channel, okay? And, and view those. I think there's only like five videos right now. View them. They're very well made and will really get your juices flowing about QImage One if that's what you are using. Yeah, I've been watching them and I'm, I'm, I'm tickled pink. I think I'm gonna start using QImage One for most of my basic printing jobs. Simple, it's not bloated, it just does the job. If I wanna do some editing and other functions, then I'll use Ultimate. Prestigious P at Art of Women Photography. Okay, that's good. Thanks, the ink cards are so expensive. On the Pro 1000, yeah, they're 60 bucks, $60. Just like the uh, P800, just like the 3880. Hey, that's the price of ink. 80 ml cards run about $60. But again, you know, if you are selling your images, your prints, you got it, you got to pay the piper. You have to use the best. A customer doesn't want to buy prints that were printed on third party, lower quality inks. By lower quality, I mean longevity is reduced now if you're just printing for fun printing for yourself for your family members to give away but not to sell then yeah enjoy your third-party inks that's what i do and i just print for fun you can get them for less you can get them for maybe i've seen them as cheap as 45 dollars for the p800 now for the pro 1000 i swear i saw some on ebay for less than that but I don't trust them because there's a lot of compatible inks out there being pushed as original and they are not original okay smart sticker says ink tech ink sublinova not cheap ink using Adobe RGB profiles possible or oh, don't use RGB is not Adobe RGB is not a profile, okay? It's not a profile. Adobe RGB is a color space, okay? Do not use that as a profile. That's why you may be getting bad results. What you need to do since, okay, I'm gonna give you what I've been doing. What you need to do is because the paper itself is matte, the transfer paper, pick a matte paper. As your as your paper choice, I'm using presentation matte on my on my 1100, highest quality, and I I'm using. Let me let me double check. Okay, let me just double check here. I'll show you what I've been using. So we're gonna open up our 1100, which is what I'm using for sublimation. Okay, I'm using premium presentation matte paper, best photo. And on the, let's see, on the advance, I'm using Adobe RGB color mode. That's not, you're not using your profile. Adobe RGB color mode, 2.2 gamma settings. Again, the color mode, not the and you notice that I played around with a little bit of the uh, adjustments for, for density and such. I had to do that in order to, to kind of create a preset that would counteract the darkening and the extra saturation and so on. But remember, don't use that as a printer profile. That is a working color space. All right, so make sure you get that. It's not a profile. Okay, somebody else congratulating our winner tonight and uh yeah so i'm gonna check that ink 
I've never heard of it, but I'll check it out and see. Um, but I'm pretty happy with the ink that I'm getting from uh, Precision Colors. And they're going to have it on the site pretty soon, sometimes early, um, late this spring, maybe, and early, maybe early summer. He needs to figure out how he's going to sell this. Somebody uh, suggested that they're paying 53 Australian dollars per cartridge for that particular printer. Actually, that's not too bad. Photosen says, uh, Jose Rodriguez, try forever soft flex for dark garments. They are really great. No cut. Is that a, a media, a paper? I'm not, I'm not doing heat, trans, heat transfer. I'm doing sublimation transfer. Um, but I don't know. I've never heard of that. So we'll, we'll check it out. Let me go ahead and uh, save that. By the way, you guys, are you guys able to see any of you guys who are watching the live stream at a later date? Are you able to also see the live stream? I know you cannot interact with it, but does it show the live stream? Because I received the notice that they were integrating this ability with future replays of live streams where you actually get to see also the uh, chat. I usually don't make a habit of watching my own videos, so I don't want to commit to a three hour uh, live stream unless I'm going to watch the whole thing again. That'll really throw my watch time uh, metrics down the toilet. So that's something that as a YouTube owner, a channel owner, you don't want to do that. Prestigious P, I am, I'm just thinking to buy original Canon card full sets. Well, really, that's the best way to go. I cannot, I cannot argue with that. But it can be a little costly, uh, seven hundred dollars almost for a set. But you know what? I mean, in the beginning, um, the truth is, in the beginning, they're all going to kind of go empty about the same time. Like right now, all of mine are low. And I decided, what the heck, let me remove them. I know how much they weigh when they're empty dry. So let me remove each one, weigh it, and see what it weighs. And I was able to figure out that I had about 8 to 10 ml of ink per cartridge. So they're empty, but there's still ink in them. And remember that it takes about 1 to 1.5 at the most 2 ml of total ink to print a letter size edge-to-edge -edge image. That is a normal image with the you know a complete tone um, balance and, and 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 so on. So, about two ml max per you know a letter size print. So, ten ml say times twelve cartridges. That's a hundred and twenty ml of ink. And that's a lot of prints that can be still printed on that printer before one of them actually reaches empty. When you print with the Pro 1000, do you use the Canon Pro Print Studio? Or does that really not make any difference whether you print with that or straight out of Photoshop? No, it does not make any difference at all. The only, the only advantage is that PSP kind of takes color management out of the question for you. And it set on, if you set it on auto, it actually does the color managed workflow. See, the Pro... 100 Pro 10, Pro 1, Pro 1000 drivers allow you to print on a very specific print mode. It's called ICM, okay? Color matching ICM. And in ICM, you can literally print by using the proper color profile for that paper. It only works for Canon papers. So you can literally print with the driver controlling color, supposedly, and you are actually printing through an ICC profile. Epson drivers don't do that, okay? You have to literally choose the ICC profile in Photoshop or Lightroom or some other editing application, turn off the driver control in the driver. Canon allows you to do that. So when you're using PSP on auto mode, you're literally using an ICC profile in your printing. So it's kind of idiot proof, okay? It takes that into account for you. You cannot do anything wrong, really. 
So if you get really weird results with PSP, good Lord, I don't know what to, what to tell you because it really is almost automatic. Wait a minute, somebody here said, let's see, I just saw something here, okay. Smart sticker says, prestigious colors, I cannot find that anywhere. What, the inks for that price? Um, Search, search, search is all I can say. And Art of Winning Photography, Prestigious P, do you have a another choice for third-party inks? PC inks have sets of inks available. Here's the difference between the current Precision Colors ink set for the, uh, I believe we're talking about the Pro 1000. You can buy other Pro 1000 ink sets from other people. But you're basically getting the generic inks that a particular company generates. And who generates these inks? Probably somewhere in the United States, either Image Specialist, which is bought by STS out of Florida. They produce your, your basic match, so-called match set for any particular printer, but they're not tweaked. In other words, they're not matched to perform together, hand in hand like OEM can. So when Precision Colors developed their ink set for the Pro 1000, they realized that the third party blue, the third party red, and the third party yellow inks did not come up with two par. And there's no other choice. There's no, it's not like you can go to some other source. There's only so many sources, so many labs that produce these inks. So he decided to incorporate OEM replacements for blue, red, and yellow. So when you buy the refill kit, not only do you get OEM blue top, OEM red top, and OEM yellow top. The other colors are fine in their third party uh, choice. Also OEM chroma optimizer, which is superior to anything available out there. I don't care where you get it from. Chroma optimizer OEM is the best. Now I get 700 ml cartridges, okay? Made for the Pro 2000, for 2000, for 6000. They cost me around $225 each. If you guys are interested in buying those, and you live in the United States, because at this point they're only shipping to USA addresses, you could contact them on the side and may, maybe uh, come up with some way that they can ship to you overseas. But $225, 700 ml, free shipping to the U.S. That's what I do. I have six or seven colors already covered with OEM. So that's what I'm feeding my Pro 1000. Plus the other colors, like the grays and blacks, I'm using PC, okay? So I'm getting the best of both worlds. I'm saving money. And at the same time, I'm producing probably the best um, prints that you can get with a hybrid third-party versus, and also, not versus, but also OEM mix of inks. And they're matched, so that's the best part of the whole deal and don't forget the pro 1000 you can internally calibrate canon printers canon print papers and also other papers i do believe we got another super chat here but let's get to the rest of the comments here Okay, so Bass Barbie is going to bail out. It, oh, I'm sorry. He, yes, it does show the live stream later. Great. That's what I wanted to know. That's what I wanted to know. Because it's very important to be able to view that as well. The uh, super chat or the, uh, the chat. Okay, so Brannot already replied. He's got the email. He will download it and install it first thing in the morning. Right now, it's almost 2.30 a.m. in Slovakia. Good Lord. That's what I call support. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, man. And Bass Barbie says, I also need to get off to bed. It's only 1.23 here. 
so yeah go to bed man it, it, it's it's too late for you guys again um maybe later this year i will start to uh begin maybe at five o'clock rather than six and that should help you guys in europe because i'm getting a lot of european uh, viewers here and that'll help you guys from having to stay up so late but i really do appreciate that thank you so much and our petra jose thank you for the great videos shout out to mike from precision colors for great service yeah i'm gonna have him possibly here with me next week and if not i will do the uh hands-on how to edit the way i do it on both photoshop and in lightroom hopefully we'll be able to stay on without any blackouts we'll see but thank you for that super chat canadian super chat ten dollars canadian mike renner mike c can you email me your website and email to get in touch with you send it to the email i use for the giveaway awesome yeah 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 Prestigious P is PC Inks in the UK. He can ship to the UK. Yes, definitely. When you check out, choose uh, the UK for your destination. There is a limitation of how much, how many pounds you can ship, but uh, you should be able to get a, re a refill kit to the UK without any problems at all. Mike Vernon says, I watch everything on my iPhone. Only place for peace and quiet around here. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know you got your twins racing havoc. You're a lucky guy, my friend. That's wonderful. Photo Zen says, Jose Rodriguez, try to see this video at your leisure. Which video is that? Um, is that a link? No, that's not a link. He uses a cheap laser printer to load its toner onto transfer paper called B paper and then press it to A, and it works similar to screen print. Huh. All kinds of methods, I'm telling you. Uh, I don't have your link. Maybe you can send me, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're in the Facebook uh, group, send me the link via um, private message. And I'll take a look at that. Jay Barclay. Hey, Jose. Thank you. Thanks to you, I have had the I have had the confidence to load my Pro 10 with precision color inks. So far, all is good. Thanks. Yeah. And the Pro 10 is so easy to refill. No yellow ink problems either. Remember that. Only the Pro 100. So once they reach empty, you can allow them to go empty. They have an ink bag. <clears throat> they don't have sponges, so you can allow them to go empty. Take them out, reset them, flip them upside down, dribble the ink right directly into the sponge. What I do is I put it right on a little gram scale, and I just watch the weight. When it reaches 32 to 33 grams, I'm good to go. Put the clip on it, take it over to the printer, unclip it, pop it in, good to go. You can do one at a time, or you can do two sets. If you have the luxury of two complete sets of cartridges, then you should always have one completely filled and reset. When the next cartridge goes empty, remove the whole shebang, pop the new set in. Remember, whether it's one or 10 cartridges, you generate one ink perch. So if you change 10 carts one at a time, that is 10, wait a minute, 10 ink purges. If you just do one complete set of 10 cartridges at a time, one ink perch. The ink purges are always the same volume of ink being wasted. So why would you want to do 1 times 10 instead of 1 every few months, right? That's the way to do it. But you need to, uh, you need to acquire that second set of, of uh, empties so that you can then refill them. That's the best way to go with any printer that allows you to manually reset the chips to full. That way you can have... Complete sets of cartridges always reset. Auto reset chips will not work in this process because they have to reach empty before they can be reset. So you're always going to have cartridges that are not fully reset because they haven't reached empty first. Now, some resettable cartridges can be reset with a resetter. Uh, yeah, you can try that, but 
the best way is for the Pro 10, Pro 100 is to have those two sets of cards that you can then manually fully exchange as you need uh, to do so. Now with the Pro 100, don't let them go empty. They have a sponge, okay? So sponge cards cannot be allowed to go empty or the sponge gets full of air and then you cannot displace that air when you refill the cartridge, okay? That's the only reason will cause problems later big problems yes so uh, photosense says i cannot put the link so i will email it to you great i look forward to that it'll be fun janet Diaz, yes thank you mike for the raffle janet uh please before you go tell people what you have okay tell us what you have and by the way by the way how did it go oh you have it right here I'm going to skip ahead to what Janet had to say. Okay, guys, I got a lot to catch up on my sublimations. Key change and t-shirts for next weekend's celebration. Also, it hasn't taken place yet of life for my beautiful, loving father, who is now in heaven, night, night, all. Oh, man, that is awesome. Thank you so much, Janet. Um, again, I'm sending you a big abrazo. And I hope that next weekend is complete success for you and what you're doing for your dad. Rest in peace. Awesome. AW with a specialty paper channel is where the videos of that paper. Okay. So A A W specialty papers. Let me add that to this little bit of information here and i'll take a look at that when i get off here all right i think we are about oh goodness about two and a half hours all right i think that is about it i hope everybody forgives me with the glitch that we uh endured uh it happens uh, you should see some of these shows that i watch and how many problems they go through but at least now you can maybe, uh, I think when we go back to the um, replay, I think they remove those glitches. And so you might end up not having to skip through, or maybe they'll just kind of uh, butt it together as a single video. So hopefully that'll be the case. All right, so everybody is going to say good night now. I will have to... Um, I have so much to do this week in basically involving more paper testing. I'll just give you a heads up. For those of you interested in Red River papers, I have a bunch of papers that I received for them specifically for me to test with third party inks. I will be using the uh, PC inks for the Pro 100, for the Pro 10. I will run uh, PC inks also on the PA 100. If anyone is interested in any inks from uh, uh, Cone or Inkjet Mall, let me know and I can load up some of those on my 2880 and test it on that just to see how they perform. I want to see how close to OEM they are. But primarily what I will be doing is basically testing the inks with a custom profile. And so that will bring us to this point. You guys need a custom profile. Anywhere you look, it will cost you $25 to $30. If you don't have a Color Monkey photo, if you don't want, if you don't have an i1 Pro 2 or 1, you're going to need someone to make a profile for you. There are many sites that do that, but I'm the only one that gives you a discount the more profiles you order. So I'm available for that so far. I have made four complete profiles for four individuals. They have loved every one of them. So, so far, so good. And so, again... Let me know via email. I'll contact you, give, me, give you the link to my ordering site. You download the images from there. You will print them using no color management when you're using the Photoshop or Lightroom utility. You cannot use those. You have to use a special utility from uh, Adobe that will allow you to print those charts without any, any color management. And Photoshop does not allow you to do that and neither does Lightroom. So I just found that out. So I redid my instructional video on my site to indicate 
that you cannot do that any longer. What can you use? Oh, QImage works beautifully. QImage 1, QImage Ultimate, you basically choose off on color management. Boom, print them, done. Email them, not email them, send them to me. I will then scan them and I will email you the finished profile. 25 bucks, 45 bucks for two and less and less and less as you go up. So if you have several papers you need profile, you will need three sheets of each. You will then print them using the methods that I describe on the video and then send me the material. I will scan them and you will have emailed to you within a day, a beautiful profile. That is it. That's the way to go. Your problems will be solved. Any of these weird um, shifts of color that you cannot pinpoint to your monitor, maybe your monitor is off, but it could be also a bad profile. It could be also a bad mismatch between a third party ink you're using and a particular third party paper you're using. All of that has to be brought together in one cohesive situation. The profile will do that for you. So please consider that 25 bucks is as cheap as you can get. I gotta make up the big money that I pay for that. Otherwise someone is gonna be really upset with me. So I need to bring that that cost of that machine over to the black side of the scale rather than the red. Yeah, that's the way it is. So that's what happens when you try to, you know, get into some of this uh, type of business. <sighs> anyway, okay, that is it. Everybody is getting late. So we'll let everybody go. We'll be back next week. There'll be some videos this coming week, again, covering some of the topics that I have not touched upon tonight. And hopefully that'll be of interest to everyone. We'll see you next Saturday evening. Thank you so much again. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Look what I've been drinking coffee out of. Now, Janet Diaz has my whole merch lot, and she loves it. Yes, I'm a printing techie. Yeah, photo printing techie. And again, tastes so much better out of one of these mugs. Better than your regular glass mug. Guaranteed. All right, thank you so much. Happy printing, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.